The Attorney General Godfrey Abuadame has called on parties involved in the suit regarding the four vacant parliamentary seats to adhere to the decision of the Supreme Court. This follows a ruling by the Apex Court declaring the Speaker of Parliament's action to declare four seats vacant unconstitutional, a report by Lord Iduasari. In a suit challenging the decision by the Speaker of Parliament, Majority Leader Alexander Afenyomakin was seeking an order from the Supreme Court to declare that the four legislators who had decided to go independent had not vacated their seats. After weeks of legal and political debates, the Apex Court brought the matter to rest after a 5-2 majority decision stating that the Speaker's order to declare the seats vacant was unconstitutional. The Court's interpretation of Article 97.1G and H of the Constitution means that an MP vacates a seat during a term of Parliament and not during a future one. Prior to Tuesday's judgment, the Speaker had an application to stay an earlier Supreme Court's injunction order dismissed. Whilst Justices Amadou Tanko and Avril Lovelace Johnson dissented, Chief Justice Getru Tokonu, Justices Mariama Owusu, Yao Asare Dakon, Ernest Jewu, and Samuel Sedu ruled for the plaintiff. Attorney General Godfrey Yeboadame as the parties to respect the decision of the court. For me, it's very important that the Supreme Court ruled upon this matter because it is something that had been um, occurring in this country. The tendency for it to occur really was there. The tendency for it to occur again was there. So it's necessary or it was necessary that the Supreme Court came to this clear conclusion and determination of the matter. The meaning of Article 97, Clause 1, Paragraphs G and H. And I think we must all respect it. Lawyer for Afenyo Markin described the decision of the court as victory for the constitution. The fact that the Supreme Court interprets the constitution does not mean that they are above anybody. In fact, there are judges sitting on the bench, one of them is my classmate, my juniors are on the bench. But once they go and sit there, even if it's my own child sitting there, I cannot but bow and give the person respect, not for the person, no. but for the office and for the law. And we expect every other Ghanaian to also respect the law. We don't all agree on what is said and what is done. As far as I'm concerned, today democracy has won, constitutionalism has won, and nobody has lost. Majority Leader Afinio Marking expressed satisfaction with the judgment. It's a moment for all of us to rally around the choice we made in 1992, democracy. Democracy requires decency, and that is the path the MPP majority caucus took to ensure that we do right to the law. Nothing more except to say that we expect our colleagues on the other side, including Mr. Speaker, to respect the outcome of this case so that we move, to get, we move on as a nation. With that decision by the Apex Court, it remains to be seen if Parliament will be recalled as a matter of urgency for businesses to proceed as usual. Meanwhile, Majority Leader Alexander Penyamarkin has urged the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Badwin, to reconvene the House to resume its duties. In a press statement released shortly after the Supreme Court upheld his suit, the Majority Leader said the decision of the Supreme Court represents a triumph for constitutional democracy and the rule of law. Now, let's take you through excerpts of that statement that was issued by Alexander Penyamarkin on behalf of the Majority Caucus in Parliament. And I read, while we await the court's full written reasoning, its decision on this constitutional question is clear and binding. The constitution does not grant the speaker the power to declare parliamentary seats vacant. It goes further to say that the Supreme Court's decision should not be seen as a victory for one side or a defeat for another. Rather, it represents a triumph for our constitutional democracy and the rule of law. The ruling reinforces the principle that in our republic, Every institution, no matter how exalted, must operate within the bounds of our constitution. It further says, to my colleagues across the political divide, I extend a hand of friendship. The time has come for us to move beyond this episode and to redirect our energies towards our primary duty, uh, which is serving the good people of Ghana who elected us to represent their interests. Uh, it concludes by saying to the right, Honorable Speaker, I reaffirm my utmost respect for your office 
and your distinguished service to our nation. This judicial interpretation of our constitution should strengthen and not to weaken the relationship between leadership and the members of the House. Um, let's engage further on this matter. We've been joined by the um, outgoing member of parliament for Odududu constituency, Edwin Nee Lante van der Poy. Uh, thanks there for your time. Uh, the Supreme Court has ruled uh, it has upheld a penal mark in suit. Now, is it possible for parliament to reconvene and to do any meaningful business uh, following from this? Hello, Mr. Van der Poy, can you hear me? Do I have Neelante Van der Poy on the line? I'm afraid uh, we're having difficulties uh, establishing contact with Neelante Van der Poy. Uh, but as I mentioned, the Supreme Court has uh, made its ruling in this matter. And we know that the majority leader, um, uh, who also represents the NPP side, Alexander Penyomarkin, has urged the Speaker of Parliament, uh, Alban Sumana Bagbin, to reconvene the House to resume its duties. Now, he released a statement uh, shortly after the Supreme Court upheld his suit. Uh, the majority leader essentially uh, said the decision of the Supreme Court uh, does represent a triumph for constitutional democracy and the rule of law. Uh, so let's try and see if we can re-establish contact with Lee Lante van der Poy, the outgoing member of parliament for uh, the Odududio constituency. Good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us here on News 360. I'm afraid we don't have him. Uh, you're still watching News 360. This is your election command center. Uh, we're streaming live on Facebook, also live on your DSTV channel 279. You're welcome to share with us your views, comments, and suggestions on our headline stories this hour. Uh, I'm told Neil Lettervanapoy has joined us on the phone lines. Neil, uh, this is some news, some good news coming in for the NPP side, uh, who indeed took this matter to the Supreme Court. Uh, we've essentially had the ruling of the Supreme Court. Um, is it possible that the House could reconvene anytime soon for any meaningful business to arise? Hello, Neil and Tifandapoy. Hello. Right. Uh, I was asking, following the ruling of the Supreme Court, is it possible for the House to reconvene anytime soon for uh, any meaningful business to arise? Well, thank you very much, Papacy. Let me say this. Um, it's unfortunate that um, the Supreme Court will give a verdict like this when it's so obvious to every Ghanaian that this particular issue did not really need any interpretation because black and white, any classic child can interpret, can just read it and understand. But they decided to have an interpretation. And for the interpretation, if you if you do random sampling of many Ghanaians, they will tell you they are not happy with the Supreme Court's decision. And coming in the on the heels of the Moe Ibrahim report, I thought the Supreme Court will use this as an opportunity to at least restore some image to itself, but they further push their image and integrity into the mud. So I'm not worried. But the second issue is simple. The question you ask, if the Supreme Court thinks that they have that authority to change the status quo in Parliament, then they should allocate to themselves the power to order Parliament to sit tomorrow. I just want you to understand one thing, and many Ghanaians do not know, that Parliament will have our term. We were supposed to go on recess on Thursday, this coming Thursday. So, from Thursday, no MP. Let me, I'm not, I'm not the leader of our side, but no MP from our side will respond to any call to leave the field and come to the house. We are not. We are not robots to be pushed here and there like that. We were recalled to the house, we came, and nothing was done because the so-called minority was refusing to accept their minority status. Their ego pushed them not to accept, so they decided not to come to the house. And so we came all the way from our constituencies. People left their campaigning, they left the work they, the work they were doing in their constituencies and came down to Accra only to come and sit down for nothing and then go back. 
and then you are expecting us to respond to any other call again, it is impossible. We will not respond to that call. Uh, Mr. Mr. Van der Poy, uh, some would ask if your side of the house is just not being, uh, forgive my words, unruly, truant, and just trying to be disobedient to uh, the Supreme Court's orders. Why don't you want democracy to we, rule? We don't care about the ruling of the Supreme Court. We will respond to a call by the Speaker of Parliament. And we will sit down and evaluate that call, look at the timing, and see whether it is convenient for us to take that decision to leave our constituencies and come and sit down in Parliament to do government business. Mr. Mr. Not... I need to find out from you if this is a personal decision or this is the position of the NDC side in Parliament. I can say this is the decision of many of us on our platform from the discussions we've had so far since the verdict came out, majority, close to 99% of us, have decided not to respond to any call to come to the house to transact any business because we have much more important things to do in our constituencies. If the MPP are not ready to do the work of parliament, we are not ready to assist them. Mr. Van der Poy, I've got to say a big thank you to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you too.